something come from nothing? This question comes up a lot when discussing atheism versus theism. It seems that many theists believe that atheists think the universe came from nothing. Many atheists do, actually, but that is because many theists don't really understand what nothing means in science. This video is not only to clear up those misconceptions, but also to address the question, can something come from nothing? As many theists like to quote Kant, from nothing, nothing comes. So can something come from nothing? For that, I need to define nothing. The first is a colloquial nothing. For example, there is nothing in my hand, or there is nothing around for miles. We are all fine with this clarification on nothing, but it does need mentioning. The second is Krauss's nothing. This is what a physicist means by nothing. This is the scientific definition of nothing. Nothing isn't nothing anymore in science. Nothing is actually a steaming, bubbling brew of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence in a time scale so short we can't measure them. If you take a region of space and take out all the atoms, all the energy, and all the radiation, it still weighs something. You say, that's ridiculous. How can nothing weigh something? It's because of these virtual particles. 90% of the mass of an atom is empty space. These virtual particles account for most of the mass of the atom. That is the scientific version of nothing. Then we have nothing. This is where it gets a little tricky. This nothing is the removal of space-time. And then we have void. This is true nothingness, and I will call it void for lack of a better term. This is the absence of space-time and the absence of quantum fabric. The important distinction here is that space-time is space interwoven with time, and the quantum fabric is a space at Planck length levels. And Planck lengths, along with Planck time, actually require their own video, so I will link that in the description. Nothing would then be the absence of something. In lore, or at least video game lore, like League of Legends and World of Warcraft, the void is another dimension of existence. Many creatures, and even some civilizations, come from the void. Amazing creatures like Cthulhu, Voidwalkers, Cho'gath, Kassadin, and others come from the void. It is entirely possible that the void would just be an extra dimension, a plane, if you will, of existence. The void, this version of nothing, plays quite nicely to the popular Kalam cosmological argument. I'll make an entire video on the fallacies at some point in the future. But to keep this video short, I will only mention William Lane Craig's premise 4 of the argument. As the cause of space and time, it must transcend space and time, and therefore exist timelessly and non-spatially, at least without the universe. This transcendent cause must therefore be changeless and immaterial, because 1. Anything that is timeless must also be unchanging, and two, anything that is changeless must also be non-physical and immaterial since material things are constantly changing at the molecular and atomic levels. Such a cause must be without a beginning and uncaused, at least in the sense of lacking any prior causal conditions since there cannot be an infinite regress of causes. I would like to point out that these attributes would also apply to nothing the void. Nothing in this sense is non-spatial, immaterial, timeless, and changeless. Essentially, the Kalam cosmological argument proves nothing. The question remains though, can something come from nothing? Well the answer is, we don't know. We don't know because we have never had an example of nothing. The closest science can get to the void nothing is the region of space that contains gluons, the particles that hold quarks together. But even that nothing still contains space-time and quantum fabric. It just doesn't contain any virtual particles. 
We have no example of nothing, so we cannot determine if it is or is not stable or unstable. When addressing this question, there are two claims. Something can come from nothing, and something cannot come from nothing. Both of these are positive claims on reality and must be demonstrated. Imagine a room with a door and no windows. For the sake of argument, let's say you have no way of determining the nature of the room. There are two options. Either the claim, there is a chair in the room, is true, or there is no chair in the room, is true. Just as the claim about nothing creating something, both are positive claims about reality, and the correct position to hold is that you have no way of determining if either claim is true, so making a positive claim on the situation would be absurd. When you hear someone claim something cannot come from nothing, ask them to demonstrate it, because they are making a positive claim about reality. If they say, well, give me an example of something coming from nothing, respond by saying something along the lines of, I do not think either claim, something can come from nothing and something cannot come from nothing, is true. That does not mean I think either of them are false. There is no way of demonstrating it either way, so we must remain agnostic about it. It may seem not intuitive to think that something can come from nothing, but intuition is thrown away in science. As Dawkins puts it in a tweet, those who joke about the universe coming from nothing are ignorant of science. If we could do physics by common sense, we wouldn't need physicists. Many like to claim, like in this picture here, that something coming from nothing is like magic. As to if I believe in magic, I do. Magic is a system of telescopes in the Canary Islands that helped us distinguish quantum fabric from space-time in the first place. Magic stands for Major Atmospheric Gamma-Ray Imaging Trankov. Yes, I truly do believe in magic.